Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is Teacher. Hello. And today we're going to talk about Depraved. Before we get into it, spoiler warning now! If you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the time code you see on the screen. Alright, so let's get into it. And what did you think of it? This is one of those that I went into it knowing zero. Uh-huh. I didn't even look it up on IMDb or anything. I asked you, what do you want to do next? You said depraved. I said, okay. <laughs> I say that because we got to the end credits, and when it showed who the writer, director, editor, and producer was, I said, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that Larry Fassenden did this, let alone was making a movie at all. And I think it's safe to say we're both huge Larry Fassenden fans. Yeah, yeah. And to realize that he was behind it, that this was his brainchild, was kind of fucking cool. Because mm -hmm. he's such a quirky, interesting person that you automatically assume he'd make quirky, interesting movies. Now, don't get me wrong. Depraved is by no means a perfect movie. It is flawed. But knowing who did it and what the end result was, this was interesting, intriguing, thought-provoking, and a kind of neat modern-day Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. And it's much better than the last movie I saw by him that I didn't realize he did until I was looking it up, Wendigo. Mm -hmm. which I did not like at all. So yeah, this film has its issues, and I'll go over them when we get to specifics. But overall, I'd say it's probably his strongest effort to date. What about you? Um, definitely agreed on that. Um, I really enjoyed this. I think it was a very good uh, reinterpretation of Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. I forget what studio it was, but you know how they were trying to do that Dark Universe series where it was like big budget uh, Hammer Films, they've now tried it twice and they failed. Mm -hmm. This shows what you need to do in order to get it to succeed. Don't You don't have to stick with big budget and big actors. Just tell a good story. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly what he did here. Mm -hmm. So, kudos to him. Agreed. All right, so there were, of course, some things I did like. Uh, hands down, the acting. Everyone played their parts very well. Uh, I had no idea that Paula Dory was Joshua Leonard from Blair Witch. But then again, that was 20 years ago. So uh -huh. how would I know that? <laughs> <laughs> but this movie belonged to Alex Burrow, who played Adam. He did such a good job. Adam, or as he was called, the monster, was the main character. And you needed someone that could act and bring presence to the role. Especially being a take on Frankenstein, who was this tall, lumbering dude. And Facendon found himself a tall, lumbering dude. Just a modern, lanky version. So, yeah, big kudos to Alex, and I hope this gets more eyes on him. Shout out to Owen Campbell as Alex, for no other reason than because he was really cute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dynamic between he and Lucy was cool. It, it felt authentic, and I thought they were written well the short time we had with them. And I was kind of disappointed at first when I realized the story wasn't, re wasn't revolving around him and Lucy. Shout out to Larry for giving himself a cameo in his own movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was brief it was brief and he had zero dialogue so it worked and he even cast his son in the film as well so as always it's all about who you know who's who was his son uh the uh, the guy working in the gallery with lucy who gave her the envelope and... yeah that's his kid okay but imagine having him for a dad yeah like cool how, as shit. <laughs> yeah how, how awesome would your childhood have been especially from all accounts his mom is just as odd Anyway, back to the movie. I liked when he brushed his hand through his hair when he first met Lucy. I thought that was cool. And I thought that Adam from The War looked cute. <laughs> so there's <Yes>. that. <laughs> but uh, overall, the acting. The acting sold the movie. Even the things that I think could have been better, which I'll get to, were passable because the acting was so good. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you? Uh, very much the same thing. Um, we have Henry, you know, a.k.a. Dr. Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. He, his acting was fantastic. Um, his motivations this time around were very understandable and believable. Right. And then we have Adam. He, as you talked about, he was tall, lanking. Um, he also had a certain, certain gentleness to him, mm -hmm. yeah. which is exactly what you needed for Frankenstein. Yep, yep. Um, so bravo to him. Uh, Joshua Leonard as Palidori. Mm -hmm. What... An excellent job of playing absolute, absolute menace. Oh, he's a D-bag. So yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, like, 
and what a horrible influence to place upon yeah, Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he knew it. Mm-hmm. He knew it was a total piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And he just simply did it for the chaos factor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, just bravo to him for playing such an excellent villain. Mm-hmm. And I think some of the other stuff I liked, I liked how we had the visual representation of whenever we saw Frankenstein's brain making the connections. Mm. And I really dug the finale where it went briefly into the black and white mm-hmm. and complete throwback to the original Frankenstein. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, acting and that finale bit. So cool. that's what I liked. Right on. Well, there was a bit that I thought could have been better. I, we might disagree on some of this cause you like some of the stuff more than I did. Uh, right off the bat, I will say this did not need to be two hours long. Because while I did enjoy it as a sum of its parts, I definitely felt those two hours. I thought the pacing could have been improved tremendously. There, there were scenes in particular I don't think needed to be in the movie at all. And it, it, it dragged in parts. And I think the film suffered because of it in the long run. You were talking about the visual stuff. I, on one hand, I get the visual metaphors. But on some of it, I thought the editing was a little too tryhard in parts. Like, I didn't hate it. But some of it I thought, was that really necessary? We're going to disagree on this completely, and that's totally fair. I didn't like the last act. It just didn't do it for me. From the moment he goes to the bar, which I think is one of those scenes we did not need, it slowly kind of just meanders a bit. I like the ending, the actual ending, a lot. But the last half hour, or even last half of the movie, could have been written a bit better and trimmed down significantly. In my opinion, in addition to the bar scene, you could have omitted the following. The random trip to the art museum with the random history lesson and hitting on male statues. All the way to the random strip club scene, like the entire day date of Adam and Polidori could have been done better. I get the museum part was just Polidori fucking with Adam and his memories and meeting Lucy for the first time, which sets up the end, which I liked. But eh. the random part with the dinner with Georgina's parents it was a little too long for my I just it could have been trimmed down. I didn't really care for it. And then in the last act. The characters seemed to just get real wonky with decisions and motivations at parts. It was noticeable in the last half. Like, the psychological mind-fucking with Adam didn't really make sense in the long run. Like, should you really be giving drugs and alcohol to your only success subject that is being held together by pills and stitches? Yes, he was doing it for the sake of chaos, but this is your ticket to, like, being a billionaire. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Uh, Why pit Adam and Henry against each other? I mean, I get why, but it wasn't... It just seemed kind of dumb and unnecessary to the plot. Again, I get Polidori was chaos. I just said chaos for the sake of chaos. But it didn't make sense as far as this, what was going on. Shouldn't they be a lot more worried about Adam being missing? Again, I defer to the only success subject of your illegal clinical trials. It just didn't fly with me. If you're bringing in investors or interested parties, shouldn't you be way more cautious from security to leaving your shit just laying around for him to find, to get into, watch, discover, etc., etc., etc.? Again, we... Kind of will disagree on this. As far as a story, I didn't like the pharmaceutical war backstory. It served its purpose, and I respect it as far as it being a retelling of Frankenstein. But it felt awkward in parts, and it stuck out like a sore thumb to me in comparison to the rest of the plot. And speaking of pharma, he doesn't have access to the red pills anymore. So what happens now? Does he just wander and die in Central Park? And and why did he dump the pills in Polidori's mouth? Like So many plot choices that seem kind of odd, and most of them in the final half, as I said. And I think if the film carried the momentum it was building, then you have something. We, we, we had something. I did enjoy it, but I think it could have been better and bigger and not like big budget, but, you know, just like more wow. But it felt like blowing up a balloon and it slips out of your hand, starts flying around the room. You catch it, try and blow it up again, slips out of your hand, flies all around the room over and over and over. I don't think the movie ever got to really properly build because it seemed to get lost in and on itself at parts. As said, I did like the movie, but it needed tweaked and trimmed. And with the right combo of both, this could have been stellar. I think if there were a director's cut, it needs to be the opposite of a normal director's cut, which are usually longer. I think if we had a shorter movie, more concise, like an hour and 40 minutes, then to me, it would have flowed better and, and went along better. And, and it wasn't bad. It just needed its own Victor Frankenstein to piece it back together. And you? Um, somewhat similar. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so I definitely agree on the big pharma part. Like, the main thing I liked about his his uh, motivations was him going to the war, having to deal with people dying, trying mm-hmm. to come back, trying to f- have a solution. The big pharma part played too much of 
the plot. Agreed. And yeah. as you said, they could have dialed that back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is actually one of my biggest criticisms is the subplot of the red pill. Yeah. When Polidori and Henry were arguing, you know, he was talking about how he insisted that they add the red pill into the entire process. So does the red pill have any involvement in the creation of Adam at all? Or is it a placebo? Mm. Who Mm. knows? Yeah. Yeah. True. Because it didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and because of that, that's my number one criticism. You know, you could have literally just removed the red pill and the movie would not have changed. Honestly, if as much as we both like Polidori as a, just a scheming D bag, if you removed him from the movie altogether, and focused mainly on Adam and Henry and their relationship and what's like, just make it more of the Dr. Frankenstein and the monster story without such the pharma influence, or you maybe keep Polidori there, but a very peripheral character. I think it would have worked more. Mm hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, that's pretty much it. Just that big pharma and the red pill subplot. And then the only other thing I didn't like was it was hard to tell, but. Did he rape Liz? I thought it was a dream. Okay. Like, I think it was weird. That's what I'm talking about. Like, the third, the final half hour was so fucking weird. And, like, because, like, Henry was dreaming it and then woke up and then found Adam with, you know, her and didn't look like he'd raped her in real life, just in the dream. Because I was writing in my notes. I'm like, this is not necessary. Yeah. And so, yeah, that part, you know, just completely removed that entirely. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's my main uh, criticisms. All right. Well, all things considered, would you recommend it? Absolutely. You? Uh, yes, especially if you're a fan of Larry Fassenden. This is, as said, for me, easily his best effort so far in the movies he's made. But I can see a lot of people not liking it. I can mm-hmm. see a lot of people being bored. It does drag. You do feel the two hours, but the story overall makes for an enjoyable watch. And if for nothing else, watch for Alex's portrayal of Adam. Because mm-hmm. he does a fantastic job. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's about it. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the Vizcast. Please subscribe to the channel, including hitting that notification bell to stay up to date on the newest content. And there is a link in the description below for the Patreon that covers all of the creative endeavors, as well as access to bonus content. So please consider showing your support. And until next time, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye.